Okay, hi there, and welcome to another in our series of macro data revision videos. We take a, a particular concept, an economic measure, and uh, take a look at some of the latest data, interpreting it in the context of where the UK economy is in the summer of 2018. This video looks at the output gap. Now, the output gap is a key macroeconomic measure. It's the difference between the actual level of economic output, the actual level of real GDP, shown in this chart in orange, and again expressed as an index of output. Uh, the difference between that and what could be achieved if the economy was moving and operating at full potential, at potential national output. And that is indicated by the blue line on this chart. So a negative output gap suggests that the British economy is operating below potential output and has some spare capacity, some idle economic resources. For example, unemployment might be quite high or firms might be operating below full capacity. In that situation, there's oftentimes pressure for prices and wages to remain low, indeed for inflation to fall. Uh, a positive output gap suggests that the economy is operating above its normal potential, perhaps even at risk or danger of overheating with a level of excess demand. We saw that, for example, in 2007, 2008, can you see there that the orange line actual output was well above potential, whereas after the recession, the orange line falls because of the collapse in output, and output spends a long time below potential. Now, a big problem for policymakers such as the Bank of England is that uh, the level of potential output is not something we can actually measure directly. So it makes it very hard to measure the output gap economists working for the bank or working for the Office of Budgetary Responsibility, for example, they have to do an estimate of what the supply side economic potential of the economy is. They need to know what's happening to productivity, what's happening to the labour supply, what is happening to the number of hours that people are working, for example. They have to do an estimate of the output gap. And this is a key evaluation point if you get a data response question on this. However, what we can say is that the latest estimate, this is the central estimate, or the UK, is that after a number of years after the recession, can you see here on this chart, where output was well below potential, minus 0.4% of GDP uh, in 2009, for example, that output gap has closed. And just in the last uh, three or four years, as unemployment has been falling, the economy has been growing more or less at its potential growth rate, but like a steady state growth rate of around 2% per year. What it also suggests is there isn't a lot of spare capacity in the economy using this measure, although we know there's quite a bit of underemployment. We know there's a lot of people working part-time, for example, who might want a full-time job. Not every factory is working at full capacity, and there are quite big regional variations in economic growth. But according to this measure, the UK economy uh, is getting close to its potential output level. So for that to increase... We need a better supply side performance in particular. We need to lift the level of productivity. Now, the output gap does appear on A-level exams. It's a key macroeconomic indicator. If you want some revision resources on the output gap, just point your smartphone camera at the QR code in the bottom right -hand corner here, and that should take you to our landing page with some study resources for you. Thank you.